ABG interpretation and scenarios. Okay, we're going to go over some critical care uh, scenarios here. We're going to get you really good with ABGs. Okay? Um, so I'm going to show you how to read ABGs in a way that you're going to be able to look at look at this ABG, see what it's doing, see what kind of patient this is, and what do we need to fix. Okay? Now, so it's not just interpreting it and naming it. We're going to look at it and see what's causing the problem. Okay? So here's the normals for uh, ABG. Now, to, uh, to effectively uh, interpret ABGs, you've got to know the normals like the back of your hand. Okay? It's, it's like a language. You have to know the words and the sentences to put together uh, the normals. Okay? You have to know the normals like the back of your hand when you're interpreting ABGs. It's like learning the language. You have to know the words and the sentences to put them together to communicate. Same thing with ABGs because there's a lot going on. Okay? There's, it's good to know the normals. But we have to go on top of that and see what kind of patient this is. Some patients do different things than others, and it's dependent on their oxygen and other things going on. Okay. So what's causing the problem? The first thing we're going to look at. Is it the lungs or, or the kidneys? Okay. Is it the CO2 or is it the bicarb? So just to see how when we're reading these things, the pH and the, and the bicarb follow each other. They have a direct relationship. We have a low bicarb, we're going to have a low pH, vice versa. For the CO2, it's going to do the opposite. It's going to have an inverse relationship. So we have a high elevated CO2 because the patient is not ventilating. We're going to be acidotic. We have a low pH. The PaO, uh, PaO2 interpretation is dependent on what, knowing what the FiO2 is. So for instance, this normal of 80 to 100, that's on room air. So it, it's going to determine a lot how sick this patient is depending on how much oxygen they're on. Okay. Normal, 80 to 100%, but that's on 21% of air. We want to keep this range under 100. Okay. We don't want to hyperoxygenate this patient. We may go a little bit lower for the PO2, depending on the type of patients that we have. Uh, COP or things like that, they may have a lower PO2 that we're okay with. And then our bicarb, uh, 24 plus or minus 2. This may vary also with certain types of uh, patient populations, like uh, COPD patients, they may have a high, they'll have a higher bicarb because they're compensating for their kind of bad lungs. P to F ratio, this is a term that we use to, check, to see how sick a patient is based on the oxygenation. So looking at normals, if we see an ABG where the PO2 is 100, that looks good if they're on room air, but if they're not 100%, it looks bad. Okay, Because what we do for the P to F ratio is we take the PO2, divide it by the FiO2, and we get this number. Okay. And I want you to look at this chart and check out the bottom, the severe. And that's the one I want you to focus on. Okay, 100 or less. So let's look at this rate. Let's look at this scenario. We have a male, 35, respiratory rate of 18, room air, 98%. We get this ABG, 742, 41, 86, 24. Looks good, right? So we're going to do the P to F ratio on this patient. And that's the problem that we have. P to 2, 86, divided by room air, 21%. And we're going to make a new decimal. And we're going to divide that, and we're going to come up with a number of 410. And so 410, that's what normal looks like. So if you have a patient who's on 100% oxygen, and they get anything other than this ridiculously high P to F ratio, 400, 300, 400, 500, they're pretty sick. Okay, So this is what normal looks like, all right? VBG versus the ABGs. So if you're using VBGs, um, they're pretty close correlation to the acid base, the pH, CO2, and the bicarb. The only thing that you're going to be concerned about for VBGs is you're not going to have a great oxygenation uh, reading. For that, you may have to get an ABG. But for the most part, the difference is pretty negligible, and it's going to save your patient a poke. Um, and it won't skew the results because sometimes you'll poke a patient who doesn't really need an ABG, and you might inadvertently make them alkalotic because of breathing fast. So, if you just need acid base for something like beet, for like a uh, renal failure, or you have a DKA patient, you can just probably make do with a VBG. Okay, let's go over some patient care scenarios with an EBG focus. Male, 46, brought in by medic for shortness of breath and DSAT to the 80s. Possible aspiration is suspected. Decreased LOC, SAT is 92 on our breather. Respiratory rate is 20 in the 20s, heart rate is 100. White blood count is elevated. Let's take a look at that x-ray. No, oh, that doesn't look great. May have aspirated. Listen to the breath sounds. So ABG is drawn. 
7-1, And what do we see here? So we have a patient who has a, who's acidotic, and the CO2 is high now, so his, what's failing? Bicarb is normal, so it looks like we have a respiratory failure. What about that PaO2? It's 102, which looks good for the most part, right? It's normal, it's one of the normal limits. But we've got to think this patient's on 100% oxygen, so that's not great. And this patient's pretty hypoxic. So a patient is not following commands, kind of more somnolent. Interventions, got high flow nasal cannula, BiPAP, mechanical ventilation. Now, we could probably think of BiPAP for this patient because he's not too far gone. However, this patient is also not following commands. He's getting more somnolent. So, and he's also failing respiratory wise. He's failing, he has hypoxia. He kind of has everything going wrong for him respiratory wise. So mechanical ventilation may be the key for him. So RSI kit is used, automaty and sucks is given. The patient is intubated to place in the following settings. There's our vent settings. X-ray looks a lot better because it looks like he needed some positive pressure to be intubated. 30 minutes later, patient is bucking the ventilator. Respiratory rate is 35, heart rate is 153, gagging on the tube. Second ABG is drawn. 753, 26, 208, 24. Now what's going on here? We've overcorrected this patient, and he's now really, really breathing. He's alkalotic. Okay? So anything, anything we could do with a vent? Can we decrease the respiratory rate to fix hyperventilation? Not really. Because we can't really, we can't make the, them breathe slower in the vent. This patient looks like they need sedation. So we need sed they're bucking the vent, they're gagging on the tube. The, what do we think of that PaO2? It's a little much now, right? 208. So let's wean that. So let's cut it in half. So we're going to wean the FiO2, and the patient now needs sedation. Female, 72 years old, heart rate 158, sat of 96% on 6 liter oxy mass. This very rate is 28. Says she feels like an elephant is sitting on her chest. It is a non-productive cough, high BMP. Already, what are we thinking? CHF patient, right? We look at that x-ray, it's fluffy. And then we listen to the breath sounds. Looks like we got some we said wet breath sounds, of course. Patient is starting to work harder to breathe. Dropped her sats to 85%. Place on 100% non her breather for 94%. ABG is drawn. 718-44-82-15. Now, what do we think of this? ABG. So she has a metabolic issue. She also has, looks like she's starting to work harder to breathe. Right? She's, because she's all of a sudden dropping her sat. So we have a CHF exacerbation with impending respiratory failure, which means at the time we drew the gas, she's not failing, but she's heading there. Okay? So we need to get hold of this. So what are we going to do? Interventions, BiPAP, mechanical ventilation. So I'm going to choose BiPAP. Okay? And why don't BiPAP is good for CHF for a couple of reasons. Number one, it's going to help uh, with the work of breathing. It's going to push that fluid to the side and help open them up. But it's also going to use a side effect that BiPAP has: uh, positive pressure dampens venous return. And what? So what's going on with CHF? We have left heart failure. And the right heart is usually working okay. And so the left heart can't keep up with the right heart, and so it's backing up all this fluid. So the positive pressure side effect that we get that we put with BiPAP may even things out. It may slow down the right heart and let the left heart catch up with it. At the same time, help with a worker breathing. And so we're gonna put this patient on BiPAP. We're gonna get them comfortable, respiratory rate, 18 nitro LASIK is given. And then, so we get a, these are our settings, and we get a gas, and it looks like we're going the right direction. Male 75, brought into the ambulance for desaturation to 69%. Heart rate is 16, oxygen ran out, and it was filling lethargic. Sat is currently 92% on three liters. Homo 2, 50 pack year history, white blood count, count is normal. Let's look at that x-ray. Now, just looking at the x-ray, <clears throat> let's say that the patient came in and just got an x-ray, didn't get any labs, didn't get any history. I could tell by looking at this x-ray what kind of patient this is. And what are we looking at? COPD patient. Let's get the tall lungs, let's get the flattened diaphragm. 
Okay, their lungs are so bad that they need every bit of surface area okay, because they've got those alveoli that are damaged. So this is how they're going to present. They've got these tall lungs, flat diaphragm, lungs that have no spring back, so they're going to have these tall, kind of ineffective lungs. No shortness of breath is noted. Patient says he feels fine, there is, but there's concern for confusion. ABG is drawn. We have 742, 56, 59, 35. Interventions. Now, what are we going to do with this patient? We have normal pH. CO2 is, seems elevated. SpO2 seems hypoxic. This is high bicarb. The high bicarb is making that pH normal. And should we correct any of this? Maybe not. He might live there. Okay? Ever heard of the term 50-50 club? Now, this guy looks like he lives in the 50-50 club because he's satting just fine on this oxygen he's on. So we have nasal cannula as an intervention, high flow nasal cannula, we have BiPAP, or we're going to do nothing. I would say nothing because this guy is a COPD chronic retainer, and we don't, we probably don't need to do anything right, right now because it looks like he just ran out of oxygen. Uh, and so the, what happens? The patient stays in the hospital until his, his oxygen tanks are arranged and he's discharged home. Okay. Male 24, respiratory rate of 44, heart rate 70. 99% on room air, confused, dry mouth, markedly elevated glucose, pretty breath, normal x-ray, AVG is drawn, 698, 1989, 8. Now what do we think of this? That's a pretty crappy AVG, right? What's going on with this patient? DKA, right? So, any interventions that we're going to do for respiratory wise? Not really, because he's breathing fine. Look at that CO2. The CO2 of 19, which is, doesn't look like a CO2 at all. Single digit bicarb, and then we have a 698 pH. Barely sustaining life with that pH, right? But respiratory wise, he's breathing just fine. So, DKA protocol started. Doc is concerned because the patient is becoming more somnolent and unresponsive. He's currently protecting his airway and set 99 room, room air. However, the doc isn't doesn't feel great about this and wants to intubate. So we intubate the patient, 802, place it 20 at the teeth, airway secured, place on the vent. After 30 minutes, we draw an AVG. Here's our vent settings. And let's look at our gas, 685, 31, 325, 88. So this patient actually got worse. Why? Because it's difficult to keep up with a DKA patient when they're compensating. Just, just not, just mathematically, it's not possible put them on the vent and then blow off their CO2 the way that they were doing. Uh, and so typically when we intubate a DKA patient, the next gas is usually worse. So there's some strategies that we could use. We try to lower sedation, consider pressure support, but typically we're already playing uphill battle. And the best we could do is hope for the, you know, to, to, to fix a DKA and hopefully they start breathing normally on their own. So this patient gets sedated, breathing slows down, Vitals are stable, starting to improve. The nurse notices that the breath sounds are clearer on the right side, but really diminished on the left. So we check an x-ray. Let's take a look at that. And notice that we have, looks like we only have one lung, right? So let's look at what's going on there. Why do we have, why is the left side widened out and the right side completely aerated? Where's the ET tube? Looks like it's in the right bronchus, right? So then in the x-ray, you see that the ET tube is in the right main bronchus. RT withdraws the ET tube from 28 to 23 at the teeth. Patient now has bilateral breath sounds, repeat x-ray shot, and there we go. We have a good a bilateral x-ray. Male 29, brought in for medics for respiratory distress. Heart rate is 158, respiratory rate is 35, status 83%, I'm not a breather. Patient admits smoking meth with shortness of breath start. Patient has tripoding, accessory muscle usage, continuous albuterol given. Let's take a look at that x-ray. Ah, I don't see it. It looks pretty clear. Patient is panicking. He has marked inspiratory and expiratory wheezes. He's tripoding. says he's going to die. Patient is coached heavily. RT talks patient in a trying BiPAP. Patient is holding the mask and says he cannot synchronize the BiPAP. Here's our BiPAP settings and then our subsequent gas. 717, 110, 82, 25.
What have we got here? We've got an asthma exacerbation. So the patient has coached, let the machine do the work. The patient's not listening, that's flipping out. The spontaneous tidal volume's dropped to nothing, 80 to 95. IPAP is increased, the patient goes unresponsive. The patient has heart of bag during procrastination. Minimal chest rise is noted. The patient is marginally intubated. Inline alveolar lymph is given. The patient is placed in the following vent settings ACA 12, 400, 500%. Reasonably smaller tidal volumes, because that's our strategy when we have asthmatic, because we want to minimize the pressure on the lungs. However, we put this patient on the vent and his pips are 66. The ventilator is not allowing him to take breaths. It's terminating the breaths based on these high pressures. And he's unable to get any kind of ventilation going. So what do we do next? The patient is moved from the vent, manually back. The patient is hard to back though. The long exhalation phase noted. Inline nebs given, the patient is unable to trigger breaths due to high peak pressures. Out of the box thinking is requested by the care team. Suggestions. So what I did with this patient is I put him on these very unconventional uh, settings. He's an adult, six foot guy, and I put him on a pressure control 40, and this gave him tidal volumes of 120 to 150. Now, yes, these are small tidal volumes, but he's starting to get some consistency there. He's starting to actually trigger the vent, and he's actually trying to, he's actually starting to move CO2. We check his end tidal, and it's there, it's 80, 89. And you'll see from the end tidal reading, that we have that shark fin that shows it's indicative of um, this kind of air tight airway. So we'll get this kind of a shark fin in tidal reading. In our gas, 725, 72, 158, 126, it's slightly improving. Ketamine is given, extreme low tidal volumes to facilitate ventilation until the airway is open. Paralytic is considered. So the patient's not in the vent. Heart rate is 100, status 93. Continuous nebs are given, mag, steroids, tidal volumes start to, start to increase to 300. Here's our vent settings. I'm going to turn down the rate a little bit. We're going to leave the pressure control there because we got 300 tidal volumes. Or we're starting to ventilate. We're starting to open them up. Okay. And tidal is starting to improve also. We've got 61. We still have that shark fin because we still have pretty tight airways. Keep in mind we still have a pressure control of 40. Patient's starting to move air. Tidal volume increasing. Win the FI to at 80%. Slowly win the pressure control. Paralytic not administered at this time because he's got 72, a minute for shortness of breath. The saturation is to 75% on the room air. Heart rate is 123, respiratory rate is 28. Sat is 93% on non breather. Market diminished breath sounds, poor oration, poor respiratory effort. BMP is elevated. Let's take a look at that x ray. It's awful. Coughing, frothy secretions, foam at the mouth, sat is now 85 on nerve percent under breather. Now, this patient, we're looking at his x ray, BMP is elevated. This is clearly CHF type patient. Why isn't he having coarse breath sounds? Why isn't he having rails? Okay, his breath sounds are diminished. Let's look at his gas 709, 79, 75, 12. So he's failing respiratory wise, and he also has a metabolic issue. So this patient, Late stage CHF. Okay, so this patient is already coughing up pulmonary edema. He's not moving air because his lungs are so fluid overloaded that he's not actually ventilating. So we're not hearing the rouse and the fine crackles. We're hearing nothing. Okay? So this patient is kind of too far gone. So we have BiPAP, which we could possibly think about using. But he might be, he, we might have to go ventilation with him because he's already coughing up secretions. So we're going to intubate this patient. Vent sedation bundle fully is inserted and we give him Lasix. And here's our assist control. Rate of 16, 550, people 10, 100%. AVG is drawn, 729, 49, 155. Looks like we're going the right direction. This x-ray looks a little better. And then we're going to make some changes, vent changes. So what are we going to do? We could mean if I had to, because we don't want to be above 100. Okay? But we're going to leave the peep at 10. Because we're not we're not using the peep now just to vent to oxygenate. We're going to use it to help push those push that fluid out because there's a lot of fluid on board. Okay? So we're going to leave that peep in, and we may leave the respiratory rate alone. CO2 is a little high, but he may start to overbreathe and start to move that on his own. Okay? 58 year old male, febrile. He uses six liters at home. Lately, he's been trying to increase his oxygen to eight liters. Baseline has been 86 to 89. 
currently on eight liters oxymass for 93%. Patient is lucid, speaking complete sentences, elevated white blood count. We get his gas, 738, 109, 88, 52. Check out his x-ray. Now looking at his x-ray, look at his history. We know that this patient's probably COPD. He's got the tall uh, lungs with a flattened diaphragm. He does have some schmutz in his lung, though. So elevated white blood count, so we're looking at probably some pneumonia on the right side there. Now look at his ABG, 738, 109. Yeah, that CO2 is very high. But why is he normal? Why is his pH normal? Why is he lucid? Cracking joke speaking. Because look at his bicarb, it's 52. So his bicarb, he lives in this state where his bicarb is so high, it's making his pH normal. So he may walk around at this 109, right? Doctor orders a bifab. Now, of course, that 109 freaks out the doc. The patient says he doesn't need it. Doctor says he has dangerously high CO2 levels and danger of respiratory failure. The patient says he doesn't feel like that, but he agrees to wear the bifab. Bifab is initiated. ABG is drawn in an hour. Here's our gas. Now, you notice that we've made him alkalotic now, and we blew his CO2 from 109 to 89. So he probably doesn't, didn't need that. So we made him alkalotic. Because this is a, what we call a super retainer. This is kind of how they live. They have these traits where they're going to they're going to compensate with that high bicarb walk around 50 in bicarb. Okay. So he might have a normal CO2. He may live at 100 or 80. Okay, and this is possible. So interventions. We're going to give him oxygen and antibiotics because we're just going to really treat his pneumonia. Okay, we may keep an eye on him, see if he gets um, if he decompensates, and then we'll probably use BiPAP or something like that. But for the most part, right now he doesn't need. Uh, aggressive respiratory intervention. 89 year old female admitted for a decreased LOC and possible stroke. Medics report that she dropped her SAP to 65% in the field. Patient uses 2 liters at home, currently on 8 liter oxymets for 100%. Unresponsive on the admin, respiratory rate between 6 and 8. Family says she isn't herself. Head CT order, AOD is drawn, 7111, 120, 250, 45. Look at the x-ray. Now, what do we notice with this x-ray in her history? We know she's probably COPD. She's got those tall lungs, flattened diaphragms, interventions. So her gas, even though she's a retainer, she's failing. Her pH is 711. Okay. Also, that PaO2 of 250, that's a bit much for anyone, let alone a COPD patient. So, so head CT is negative. Patient is somnolent, but starting to respond to some questions. Care team is at a loss for her confusion. The doctor still wants to intubate. While we're preparing for intubation, you're talking to the family. They mentioned that the patient ran out of oxygen and just didn't tell anyone. They were unaware how long her oxygen was out. The medics transported the patient on 100% non rebreather for the 50 minute transport and placed her on 10 liters when she arrived in the ER. Any recommendations? So what we have is we have oxygen induced narcosis in the sensitive COPD patient. So doctor wants to intubate, so what does that? Will we try BiPAP to blow up that CO2? Or should we just decrease the FiO2 in weight? Now, the doctor still wants to intubate. So you ask the MD to give the patient time off hydrogen and titrate that FiO2 to 80% and get an ABG in 30 minutes to raise this. The MD agrees. Patient is placed on room air. Patient's, uh, patient drops the SAT to 86%, but is starting to wake up. The ABG is then drawn. We get a 736. 55, 69, 45. So now we're getting in, in, we'll go in the right direction. We have a normal gas, and the patient's starting to wake up. Patient is placed on two liters for 88% and up. Patient is alert, answering all questions. Patient sleeps for a few hours, labs and vitals are normal, wakes up, and goes home on home two. Now this patient just dodged a bullet. They were almost intubated because of this narcosis. Now, I mean, this, these things happen. We've got to keep an eye out for them. Sometimes a COPD is very sensitive to this, and we'll get to this point. I've never had to intubate a patient in my, in my career uh, that had this, that had this kind of narcosis from oxygen. I've always just had to be able to take the oxygen off, and this almost happened, but uh, luckily the doctor was open to suggestions, and this patient kind of bailed himself out of this and didn't get intubated. Male 39. Presents with a progressive shortness of breath for four days. Uh, SAT is 95% on eight liters. Respiratory rate is 29. Heart rate is 140. Lap reveal elevation of white blood count. 
BHP, lactate, liver function, acute renal failure. APG is drawn, 723, 61, 77, 18. Here's our x-ray. It's awful. Complete white out, pretty much. Interventions. High flow, BiPAP. Now, we've got to think about this. So we're failing respiratory-wise, we have a CO2 60. We also have a bicarb of 18. So we have metabolic issue, we have a respiratory issue. Uh, he has a B, elevated BHP, he has elevated lactates, acute renal failure. He has a lot going on. Okay? This patient is probably septic, he may need more fluids. And the fact that he has acute renal failure may mean that he's going to retain more of this fluid. So he may get worse. So minimum, we're going to do a BiPAP on this, okay? on this patient. So we also have mechanical ventilation in the mix. So BiPAP is initiated. SAT, SOB is not improving. Respiratory rate increases to 35. Spontaneous volumes are 900 to 950. BiPAP has decreased. The volumes are still trucking along pretty high. Respiratory rate increases to 44. We'll go back to previous settings. The patient is nervous. Heart rate is 155. APG is drawn after an hour. And BiPAP he flinches from the poke, requiring an additional attempt. Sedation is advised by the care team. So those are BiPAP settings. And he's actually getting worse on BiPAP. 724, 88, 82, 18. He has a high demand respiratory demand. Okay, so that probably means he's going septic. Impending respiratory failure on BiPAP. So he's ventilating, he's trucking along, but he needs more. Okay, because he's at those 800 tidal volumes, he's still only blowing off CO2 of 80. So he needs more of everything because he's septic. So no BiPAP changes, Ativan's given. Patient's given Ativan. Sat, is drop, SAT drops to 87, we increase that by 2 to 80. Shortness of breath is not improving, still working hard, breathing like a freight train, respiratory rate is 40. Patient appears more somnolent, heart rate is 130, APG is drawn after 30 minutes. Patient does not notice the poke this time. Okay, last time he was freaking out. This time he didn't even notice. BiPAP settings are the same, except for the FIO2. Gas is worse, 719, 91, 63, 18, starting to fail. So now we have respiratory failure, not impending anymore. Okay. Interventions, We've got to intubate this patient. Septic, high demand, okay. looking ahead, a lot of things could probably go wrong. Probably should have intubated this guy in the first place, but we gave him a shot. Okay. It's placed on the AC, 16, 550, people 10, 80%. Sedation is titrated, heart rate is 88, SAT is 100% on the vent. Patient is not over breathing, ABG is drawn after 30 minutes. At an AC of 16, 550, peep of 10, 80 percent. Our gas is 736, 46, 176, getting better. X ray looks pretty RZ. Not looking great. Changes. There's our X ray. Got a lot going on there. Any kind of changes we want to make. So we can win the FI2 to 60 because we don't want that. SPO2 above 100, and we're going to keep the PEEP and the respiratory rate the same because he's got a lot of issues, a lot of fluid issues.